Hey, here's one of the things that I have learned, that the course and the quality of your life is not just determined by who you are, what you have, and what you can do. The course and the quality of your life is equally impacted by who you're with. Relationships matter. But here's something else that I think I've learned um, in addition to that truth, and that is when it comes to relationships, even though all people are equally valuable in the eyes of God, all people don't add equal value to you. And so if you're gonna experience the accomplishing of your destiny, you've got to discern who is and who isn't supposed to go with you. In this video, I'm gonna give you some tools and some tips on discerning who should be in your circle in certain seasons. Hey, so a while ago I wrote this book. It was called Relational Intelligence and um, it's called The People Skills You Need for the Life of Purpose You Want. Let me tell you why I wrote this book. The reason I wrote this book was because of pain. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Pain in two places. Pain, number one, that I experienced in my personal life, and then pain I was observing in my professional life. See, whether it is ministry through the church or ministry in the marketplace, um, my assignment and my area of emphasis has always been people. So as a church, so as a church leader, I'm a shepherd, so I shepherd people. In the marketplace, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, and I train people in coaching, speaking, and leadership. It's all people. And here's what I realized, generally speaking, whether this was personally or professionally, people's greatest joy and people's greatest pain came from the same place, relationships. That there was no area of a person's life that was not impacted by them. Person's spiritual health impacted by relationships. Emotional health impacted by relationships. Financial health impacted by relationships. Relationships. Professional opportunities impacted by relationships. There is no area of our life that is not directly or indirectly impacted by relationships. So when something like this is so consequential to our well-being, we cannot afford to be unintentional in the way that we manage them. And here's what I saw, and it's the reason I wrote the book. I began to see in my life and in the life of other people that there were very few resources out there that actually gave people principles and guidance on how to manage platonic relationships. You see, all of the teaching that I heard, or the majority of the teaching that I heard, or the majority of the books that I come across were teaching and, teachings and books that were all about romantic relationships, primarily marriage. There wasn't even a lot out there on dating, but there were some. But when it came to managing all of these other areas of relationships, there's, there wasn't a lot of material out there. So I went to the most reliable source of information for me, which is the Bible, right? It is, for me, it is the most reliable source of information on the planet. I trust it more than I trust any other book, 100%. And, and there are reasons for that, right? It's not just theological reasons for me, it's logical reasons for me. But anyway, the point that I'm making is, I went there and I started studying it, and I began to see that the Bible had a whole lot to say that we weren't saying about relationships. Like I saw stuff like in Proverbs, like Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. I'm like, yo, wait a minute. That's been in the Bible the whole time? Walk with the wise and become wise. I become like who I walk with. What? That's been in the Bible the whole time? For a companion of fools suffers harm? Wait a minute, I just thought I had to be a fool to suffer harm. But the Bible says I have to be I, all I have to be is a companion of fool of a fool. And that means I can experience an indirect consequence of their actions that I don't have to do it, but they can do it. And if I'm with them, I can be adversely impacted by what somebody else does. I I didn't see that. I, I didn't see there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and their brother is born for adversity. Wait a minute, so you're saying, this is in the Bible too? So God, you're saying that there are friends that are sometimes, watch this, 
more intimately acquainted with us than family. Whew, that there are some friends that are what family should be. That there are some people like myself, for example, I don't have blood brothers, but I have friends who are like brothers. I didn't see that. I, I didn't see as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. First Corinthians 15, 33, I think, uh, is what Paul says, don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good care. I started seeing all of this in scripture. I was like, wait a minute. There is some insight, there's some guidance that God's given us. So watch this, people aren't just people, people are purpose partners. And I can't reach my destiny unless I discern who and who shouldn't be a part of my life and what seat they should or shouldn't sit in. Now, I know this makes some people really uncomfortable. It may be making you really uncomfortable because I think sometimes, now watch this. When I say just because it makes us uncomfortable doesn't mean it's wrong. Like it's possible for our conscience to be bothering us about something. And what, what Titus says is this, Titus says to the pure, all things are pure. But it says to those that, that are not, even their conscience is defiled. So your conscience is going to feel based off of what has been fed. So if you're conscious, watch this, so if you've been fed, let's say the information that, I don't know, that um, working on a Monday is wrong. If you were fed that, then your conscience is going to feel based on how you were fed. So you can feel wrong about something that isn't. And so this may make you uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean what I'm saying is wrong. I want you to give me a minute because maybe you're feeling uncomfortable because of something that you fed yourself or others have fed you. And that is that it's somebody else's responsibility to steward your relational life. That somehow it is, maybe you're thinking somehow it is not loving, um, it is not kind, or maybe it's not Christian to refuse to allow uninhibited access to any parts of your life by whoever wants to be a part. And hey, if you feel that way, that I think it's maybe in some sense it's admirable, but it doesn't mean it's accurate. Because the greatest example of what it means to be relationally intelligent is Jesus. Right? I mean, we are Jesus followers. We want to be Christ-like. That's not liking Christ. That's, that's being like Christ. And um, I think it's incredibly important that we look at how he managed relationships. There are certain layers of relationships I want you to see that he had. Okay? So he had uh, the three, the twelve, and the other. Darius, what do you mean? You had the three, which some biblical historians call the inner circle. Who were that? That's Peter, James, and John. When he went to Mount of Transfiguration, who did he take with him? Peter, James, and John. Who did he not take with him? The other nine. Does it mean they didn't matter? No, the other nine disciples. Does it mean they didn't matter? No. Does it mean they were bad people? No. It means he only took those that were assigned to go. And here's what's awesome. He took the three and didn't give the nine an explanation as to why they didn't go. So when he goes to the Mount of Transfiguration, he takes Peter, James, and John. When he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, who does he take? Peter, James, and John. Because your inner circle can handle you when you're at your highest, Mount of Transfiguration, and your inner circle can also handle you at your lowest, the Garden of Gethsemane. It was not immorality revealed in the Garden of Gethsemane, but it was humanity revealed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he took people with him that could handle his humanity. And you know where a lot of people get in trouble? They take people to the valley with them that can only handle them on the mountain. So they're upset and they're betrayed and they're confused because I don't understand how these people could do this. And it wasn't that they were bad people. It, it just put them in a bad place. 
So there's a three, there's the inner circle. Then there's the 12, which included the three, the 12 apostles, disciples. And even in that, they had one Judas that was uh, and then you had the 70, or what, some, what one a gospel writer calls the 72, or what some calls the other. And this was a larger group and contingent of disciples. So there are things he did with the 12 he didn't do with the 70. There are places he took the 12 that he didn't take the 70. And then there are things he did with the three that he didn't do, do with the 12. And then there are places he took the three that he didn't take the 12. Listen to me. He had discernment regarding who the three were, who the 12 were, and who the seven. And listen. If you're going to reach destiny, if you're going to have peace, if you're going to have purpose, you got to decide the same thing. Do you know who's your three? Do you know who's the 12? And do you know who's the seven? Everybody that has a place in your life doesn't have the same place, but it is your responsibility to put them in the right place. I hope this video helped you do just that. You know, this is a training on relational intelligence. And if you want more coaching and training on relational intelligence, you should consider being a part of a group, a community I have called Daniel's Dan. I teach a number of things, but one of the things I teach is relational intelligence. All right, take care. God bless.